All right, today, so today we're going to be looking at being able to mount an x-ray film using different landmarks and different uh, areas of a mouth that we can identify off of our x-rays to get us to have a fully ordered set. So starting with a couple things that we're going to learn, uh, let's go into the front area and start looking at different aspects right there. So in this area, our anterior set, which is our canine, our centrals and laterals, and our canine, and it flips down to the bottom the same way. Canine, central laterals, and then canines again. This is my patient's upper right. This is my patient's upper left. Uh, if we look at this area right here in the center, as we go into our area that's superior than the roots of this tooth, you're going to find these little hold areas. And what does that look familiar to? Well, that's our nasal septum. This is going to be our nasal septum that goes and splits our nose nasal cavities in two. And these areas are just kind of like the holes that are pretty much into your nose on that side. You can see those also pop up over here on the patient's left side and patient's right also. So it means that you were probably angling too high and you got too much angulation on there where we brought this area that's not needed down into the shot instead of getting the crowns of this tooth in there. So if we ever see this nasal septum or this nasal cavity in these front areas, then we know that these are going to be the maxillary or the top front teeth. So that's one key thing to look at for those. As if we look for the other maxillaries, let's go over here to this back portion where if we go over to these molar areas, this is my patient's upper left molar, where we have this little similar type of oval shape to our molars. This is going to be where we have our maxillary sinus. This is going to be hovering right above where our molars are, slight bit above where our premolars are, and we're looking to see where our root tips are in reference to how deep or how deep are we able to go into this area. Maybe a doctor's trying to take out a tooth or sink an implant and they need to see what their depth is and how far can they go before they meet this uh, maxillary sinus area. If we go back a little bit more to where we can still see this maxillary sinus area up here above the molars, we also have the maxillary tuberosity that's showing up right here. And you can see that everything has a swoop, almost like a smile-like swing to there. Everything in dental has a smile to it, almost like uh, how we smile normally. In this area, it smiles going way back here, and it goes and makes that same type of smile-like curve as we go along. As we uh, also look into these maxillary molars, we're going to see their root, uh, their root sequence. So usually with our premolars, we're going to tend to have either a single root or birooted two roots on these, depending on which tooth that we're looking at. But specifically with our molars, our molars, if I go and pull this x-ray out for a second, we're going to be able to identify that there's a mesial root, there's a distal root, and then there's a palatal root that hides right up here in the back. That's three roots, and if I go draw that over here, that's going to be our tooth in question that we're looking at. You're going to come up. You're going to make that mesial root. I'm going to try to draw as they have it here. We're going to have our distal root. That's going to go up here, and they go and cut off just like so. And then right in between them, they have this paddle root that hides in behind, and it usually extends pretty far up there like that. This is going to be our paddle, our distal, and our mesial. And this is going to be what we're going to refer to when we're looking at our x-rays as our shirts. Our shirts have three holes so that we can go and put our arms and our heads into. Just like this. Our mesial, our distal, and our palatal root. These are our shirts. Give it a little bit like that and go team. Next thing we're going to go look at is the mandibular ones. The mandibulars for their molars are going to be a slight bit different. Or if I go and put this film back in and we go to our mandibular set down here, our bottom teeth, our bottom teeth have a little bit of a different type of swing to it. If I pull out this x-ray here to begin with, the x this uh, molar now has two roots. I'm going to draw it down here. This is going to have just like so. And we're going to go and swing out low. And it has one root. And then it goes and swings out 
It has a second root. And we call these ones our pants. We're always going to be dealing with our shirts and our pants. Just like that. The roots that come out here are going to be our pant teeth, our mandibular molars. So we can call this our mesial and our distal root in this aspect. And this uh, top teeth are going to be our t-shirts or our shirts. Shirts and pants, shirts and pants. Another thing with these mandibular roots is that they have a tendency to, the root tips tend to sway towards the posterior. They sway to posterior. And in this situation, if this was my molar and it swayed its roots back that way, that means this is going to be the, this is going to be the lower right molar. If the roots swayed the opposite way, then it'd be going to the lower left. So that's something also to remember when we're trying to decipher if it's shirts and pants or if it's top and bottoms. Another thing to look at is the ante in the anteriors is the width of the tooth. How wide or how large is that uh, is the tooth? On the bottom teeth, they tend to be smaller in width. The top teeth tend to be larger. As in, as like I mentioned before, sometimes it's a little bit tough to see. If I can draw my maxillary tooth in comparison to probably two of my mandibular incisor teeth that I would have to deal with. And they almost are equal in width for one tooth on the max on the mat on the top teeth to the width of the bottom teeth. So if you look at the sizes of the top and bottom that'll be able to show that one is for our maxillary, one of them is for our mandibular. Something to keep in mind for that one. When we go into the bite wings area, the bite wings, like I mentioned, have a curve to it. That's called the curve of spee. Curve of spee. And that is going to have that's going to make it, like I mentioned before, that everything has a smile like curvature to it. So we'll have our molars doing their doing their thing. First molar, our premolar premolar, and then they have a canine that goes and shows up there. And the bottom teeth follow the same type of sway. Molar, molar, premolar, premolar, and then canine. Just like so. So when we look at our teeth, like these, like these bite wings, they should have a curvature, like a smile. None of them should be upside down. Sometimes they'll be straight, but for the most part, just like this mandibular that goes and makes that curvature, that, that smile-like uh, curve to it, that's what we're trying to notice when we're mounting our x-rays. All the mandibular teeth, their roots face down, so you can look at the pants and see that all the pant-like teeth face down. All the three-rooted teeth on the maxillary face upwards. Wide teeth on top, smaller with teeth, uh, smaller with teeth on the bottom, and then we can go into mounting. Another thing, if you're still on physical films, is going to be these dots that end up in the corners of our films. If you're going to be mounting uh, physical films, we need to identify that this dot is in a certain orientation. So, as an example, when I go over to this set of x-rays that I've scrambled, just as so, they've all been mixed up in different ways and flipped around, I'm going to put those into a pile mesh right over here. And I'm going to have my blank set of x-rays where I'm going to be looking at. The first thing that you're going to look at is when you pull out an x-ray, it's like, okay, what does this look like? Well, right now I see that there's some type of sinus area up here or some nasal, uh, nasal cavity. So I can flip this up and try to identify, is it a top or a bottom? So when I look at it, okay, I see that there's a canine. It's a really long root, really wide, and the teeth around it are pretty wide. This is probably my maxillary canine. But also where that dot is facing is going to tell us which size it goes on. We want to have pimples, not dimples, is the term that we always tend to know out there. There's going to be that dot, and if you feel over it with your finger, it should feel like a pimple, a raised dot. And we want that to always be facing us as we mount it onto this film, uh, onto this film mount. We do not want dimples. If you were to go put it on the other side and it would be a depression, that would be our dimple. We don't want dimples, we want pimples, which of course is very odd to want normally. 
I go on to my next x-ray and then, hey, I have molars, I feel my pimple, and or I have, uh, I go on to my next x-ray, I see that I have centrals and laterals in here, I feel like there's a pimple that's going right there next to that x-ray. I go on to my next one. Oh, it looks like I have top teeth and bottom teeth in this shot, so this is going to be my bite wing. I feel for my dimple or my pimple, right now it's a pimple, and I go and look at the curve. It looks like it's curving the correct way, it has that smile-like look. Now let's look at the order of operations. Now we have a molar back here, the next one lines molar, then it goes premolar, premolar, and probably a canine after that. Knowing that my molars start all, all the way out here in the outer end and go into premolars and to the centrals and canines and laterals, I know that this probably needs to go all the way to the back. I see a majority of molars and premolars in here, so it might have to fight for its uh, place over here in these spots. Let's go put it in the premolar spot to begin with. The next shot that we have over here, feel for dot, I feel the pimple, I see a canine, large with uh, size or edges, go from there. Feel the dot, got a pimple, l uh, very small with teeth in the front, and I put this as essential. Go on to the next one, feel the dot, oh, right now it's a dimple, so I'm going to flip it around to the other side. Now I got pimple. I see that there's a maxillary sinus that's right above these roots. There's no teeth going back from here, so this is the last molar. That must mean it's a molar shot, and this is going to go on the top teeth because that maxillary sinus, and I'm going to see those three roots that show up, the palatal, distal, mesial one. Feel for it, and this is a pimple. This is shirts and pants. Remember, this one's pants, two roots. Now I'm going to go put this on the bottom. Order of operation, molar, molar, premolar, premolar, probably canine from there. Move forward. Going on to the next one, this was a little bit more of a harder, difficult x-ray to see. I have a dimple, so now i got the pimple side. This goes on the top, I see my maxillary sinus up there. Next one, okay, got a dimple, now it's a pimple. This is going to be the lower left. Molar, I got a dimple, now here's a pimple. It looks like this is a wide canine, but it looks like these are small, small incisor edges, incisal edges. Put it right there, and you just keep on going from this part. And sometimes with those ones that can uh, that can kind of take place for a premolar or molar for those bite wings ones, you can uh, reset them at the end once you get them all in place.